It's wonderful to see you all today, and I just want to thank you that if you... How, how many of you received any sort of advance notice that today would be communion? I'm just testing to see how many read the bulletin. Okay, fail on our part uh, that you did not uh, get, a, get a hold of that. We've kept it in the, in the section that has the calendar, uh, so if you need us to emphasize that some other way, we, we will do that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't matter in some respects. Some feel like they need a heads up for communion so that they can do some special soul searching. Um, we understand that, and we're trying to get better at our uh, communicative process. Not the least of which is, have you signed up with your information so that we have it, especially your email? Please, if you haven't, uh, make sure that I get it at the end of the service. There are little cards at the back that you can put your information on because our desire is to send the bulletin out by Thursday night before Sabbath, okay? So that you can have information about what's coming up and perchance if you need a reminder about participating uh, that you will be remember, oh yes, I'm supposed to be helping with the deacon's duties today. So this is, uh, this is our hope, is that we can all know these things. The last several weeks we have been uh, following through with a, a couple of uh, phrases about God and the, the hope that I have had is that, that this would, would turn our minds more to thinking about, how shall I say, thinking about how God thinks and feels. It's often that we spend time in conversation with him about what we think and about what we need. And uh, the prayer time uh, that, that Chris and I have learned in the past that goes acts. Have, have, have you heard about this one? Adoration, confession, AC, thanksgiving, and then the last, which often is the first, S, supplication or now this is what I need from you God but you see you've had adoration confession thanksgiving beforehand that's the simple one that, that, that we learned many years ago and kind of is the one that we try to go by but oftentimes we, we don't spend that time to be thinking what's going on with God I mean as I prayed this morning let's face it here in this moment where we have come into this dedicated space called a church building, we are at a nexus point between the God of the universe who has invited us to come, the one who made us, he has invited us to come, and so space has been made so that we, who are his creatures, can come and be with him. And, and show, in some respects, show up. Now, if we took the time this morning, which we could or should, we could probably pass the microphone, and I think every single one of us could probably come up with a moment this last week where God showed up for us. And if we pushed those who may not even believe in God, I would not doubt that they would come up with something in their week that's not explainable by, I took care of everything. You know that little phrase, that little thought that most of us have? I took care of everything. Really? You did? So you got home safely five days this week. How did that happen? When thousands of other people had fender benders and or they got flat tires like the guy that I was following to church this morning. He, he has this nice car and I noticed that his, his back left tire is down. Now, I have made it my mission in life when I'm a passenger or a driver on the road to let people know when their tires are low. Now, it's a, a risky thing because when you stop at a traffic light and you tell somebody to roll their window down, they get kind of worried these days. So I do it only when it's really necessary. And so I caught up with this guy uh, and, I, and I said, you know, your tire is low. He says, yes, I'm on the way to change it. 
he had two kids in the back seat. And, and, and so I was really glad to hear that A, he knew he had a low tire, B, he was on the way to change it, and, and I was thinking, yeah, you've got about five pounds of pressure in that tire, you better change it quick. But I didn't say that to him, I just said, oh, I'm really glad you're on the way to change it. So if we were to, to, to all testify this morning, we could probably say, you know what, God showed up this week. And he protected me. He provided a roof over my head. He, okay, so this is us now turning our attention, not so much to, to what happened to us, but this is us now turning our attention to, well, what was God up to this week? So in the last several weeks, we've said things like, God knows. Well, what does God know? We reviewed the story of Joseph and found he not only knows the past, but he knows the future. And then, and then we said, God feels. Well, what, what does God feel? We reviewed the story of Ruth, about a, a, a mother-in-law and a, and a daughter-in-law and how they felt about each other and that really it's all about coming home. It's all about being together and saying, your God will be my God, and wherever you live, I will live. Where you die, I will die. Being together as family. So this week, this week I, I couldn't help myself. I, I, I figured if God knows so much, if he feels so much, what are his wishes? What are his wishes? And, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought, and I, I, I basically boiled it down to this. God wishes to get back together with us. Does that make sense? God wishes to get back together with the creatures that he created in his image. He wishes to invite us to a garden party. Now, uh, it is with great pride that I tell you that some years ago I found out that uh, <clears throat> the gardener to the queen at Buckingham Palace in England had the last name of Stevenson. <laughs> would, not, would not that be something that you would be uh, uh, happy about, especially if your father was Mike Stevenson, and that's, not, that, that's my dad, not me, uh, and, and he had taught you the art of gardening with a flat uh, spade and, and, and much digging of Hertfordshire flint when you were in England, and you think now, well, the guy that's gardening for the queen, his, his name is also Stevenson. So maybe it, maybe it wasn't for nothing that I learned to be a gardener. Our Father in heaven, his wishes are that we would accept his invitation to a garden party. I say this because he wishes that, that we would be able to eat freely of the tree of life, that we would be able to drink freely of the water of life, both of which are flowing in heaven and will be flowing, according to Revelation, again in the Garden of Eden, Revisited. It, it, it's amazing to think that the garden that was lost by our original parents is the, is the self-same garden, especially according to our friend Ellen, is the self-same garden that God is going to recreate, is going to open back up to all who would like to accept the invitation to the garden party. It's, it's fun to think that this is the God that we serve. This is what he has come to earth to invite us to, is a tremendous garden party, the garden that he has created originally that he would like us to come back to. Revelation twenty-two seventeen says, The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let them drink the water of life without charge, with, without any, any sort of copay, any sort of uh, 
cover charge to get in. Freely they are to drink. 24.14 talks about eating from the tree of life. Our, 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 our first mother and our first father decided to eat from what tree? And where did that get them? Where did that get us? It got them an angel standing at the gate of Eden, barring them from eating from the tree of life. Jesus, Jesus has come. God has come to earth in the form of Jesus, and he has said, I would like to invite you back to eat from the tree of life. So it's, it's very simple in many respects. This morning, if you want to know what I believe God wishes, He wishes that we would accept His invitation to the garden party that He is planning. It's good to spend time thinking about what God knows, what He feels, and what He wishes because next week we're going to be talking about what he does, what he does now, and what he will do in the future. Because of what he feels, because of what he knows, and because of what he wishes, he is doing and will do some amazing things amongst us. Be here for that. Tell your friends that this is where you can meet with God Another text that, that I want to leave you with this morning is Psalms 85, verse 10. It has some symbols in it, but I want you to, to give those symbols life in your own life today, if you wouldn't mind. 85, 10 of the book of Psalms talks about the fact that grace and truth kissed. Grace and truth come together in a garden party. So if you are thinking this morning, what, what does God really wish? Well, he comes to us with grace. He comes to us as the embodiment of truth. Truth with a capital T is named Jesus. He comes to us and he offers us grace. And, and that really comes in the form of that invitation to the garden party. I don't know about you, but as we participate this morning uh, in, in this service once again that will give us opportunity to, to imbibe the symbols, bread, grape juice, wine, the fruit of the vine, that we will again accept the invitation. Amen. I'm going to invite uh, us to go and wash feet. Uh, we have set out several opportunities for people to do this. And if you are a gentleman and would just have somebody in mind that you would like to serve with or be served, then we invite you to take yourselves to classroom I, which is down through the tunnel and completely on the right-hand side over here. If you would like to be together with a lady, then uh, please do so in the fireside room. And if you want to serve your spouse or you'd like to do this as a family, which we definitely encourage, uh, we have made readiness for you in the, the multi-purpose room at this time. Uh, if you'd like to just remain here, there will be some lovely music playing and you can uh, also do some self-examination uh, if you like, and then we'll all come back together and participate in the Lord's table. Amen.
Again, we want to welcome you to the Lord's table. This is something that uh, we have scheduled to, to happen uh, four or five times this year, not the least of which will be the opportunity at Christmas time coming up in 2019, like we did this last year, to have uh, more of an agape type feast. Uh, just to let you know that that's something we also do. But here today we invite you, if you confess the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you are welcome to participate with us in this uh, communion service. We uh, appreciate as the leadership of this church that you trust us with the opportunities that come to this congregation and uh, that you are here today with uh, the young, the old, and the in-between. We are grateful that you are here. May we be blessed as we worship together. I'm going to invite uh, Brother Milt to have the prayer for the bread and Brother Greg to have the prayer for the wine and we will then proceed with uh, passing things out. Thank you. We'll kneel. You may kneel if you like, or you may remain seated. O great and merciful God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, who gave his life, and rose again, that eternal life can be assured for us. Today, in our humble, sinful state, we come to you, so thankful for your grace. Fill us today. Make us whole. And as we partake of this communion, Lord, we thank you again for the mercies you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, spilt blood is not something we would celebrate. And yet we must, because in this case, the case of your son, there's power in that blood. Mm -hmm. Power to transform our lives, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Power, as was noted in our lesson study today, to dip our robes in that and have them made white as snow. It's a mystery and a miracle and we're grateful. We take also the symbolism of wine and table, knowing that it was Passover when this feast first became celebrated in a Christian way. And understanding that judgment has passed from us through the blood of the Lamb. Today we partake of the cup because Jesus asked us to and because it's what we do when we build community of grace. We sit around a table and we're thankful because you promised that one day we'll sit around a table again with you and share this cup. And so this cup that we drink from today, may it symbolize our lives our shared values and experience, this grace that comes to us unbounded, and this blood of mystery that when we wash our robes makes them white as snow. Cleanse us, bless us, infuse us in Christ's name. Amen. We have prepared 
for all of those, including my dear wife, who are gluten-free. So if you are, just signal. And uh, I believe these young men right here have gluten-free to serve. Otherwise, you're welcome to have gluten-free as well. Okay, thank you. Hopefully everyone has been served, and uh, we are thankful for our, our stand-in helpers today. Uh, we are we're grateful.
favorite passage at this moment, of course, is 1 Corinthians 11, where the Apostle Paul is speaking to us as our rabbi today. And he says, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, but that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, And said, this is my body. Sorry, turn two pages. It was broken. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Do this like the wonderful tapestry on the front of this table. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. I don't know about you, but this is one of the big reasons why I say grace when I eat. Because I'm thanking the God who has provided not only my daily, but also my everything, my eternity my future. And I'm hoping that that's why you say grace as well. Because he says, do it every time, every time you drink. There's so many phrases that can be used that people use around the world when they clink glasses together when they're around table. Much of it has to do with health, doesn't it? In Spanish, I believe it's salud. Your health. I believe that that's why Jesus came. He said, one day, very soon, I'm going to drink this with you and we're going to drink it at that garden party. And that's when I will have changed you and you will be able to live with me where I am in the presence of my Father. Because the death angel (coughs) passed over and Jesus rose from the grave, victorious. So here we sit with these symbols, his body and his blood, the power that saves us. So as he said, eat it and drink it. why you have to take a drink after you eat it. Pat, thank you for making uh, the bread today and those who had gluten-free, we'll see what brand name that was in case it was just a little too tickly. I want to tell you something exciting for me. I don't know if it'll be exciting for you, but the next time we do this together, we'll be on the scheduled Passover. This year, maybe for the last time for a long time, Passover and Easter will be on the same weekend and in order that Passover will be Sabbath and Easter will be Sunday. So we will be having, as we did last year, we will be having a Passover communion. So if you have friends that you would like to celebrate Easter with and show them the connection between communion and Passover, especially your kids or people with kids, this is going to be a very hands-on moment where you will get, like we did last year, to participate in a Passover that shows us, test question, Do you remember which cup of the four that Jesus took and said, drink this, this is my blood that was spilled? Because there are four cups 
that get drunk during the Passover meal. So if you've forgotten, you have another chance this year to remember how the communion service comes out of the Passover service. It's a lot of fun. It's great for families. Please invite your friends to celebrate Easter and communion and Passover with us this year right here. Thank you for being with us. The Bible says that when Jesus had finished his Passover meal, because that's what we call the Last Supper, as Jesus had finished the Passover meal, they traditionally would sing a song and then go out together. So we're going to sing a closing hymn together and then we're going to go out and we're going to be uh, able to be together for, for lunch or whatever else you are having to do today. But may it be in the name of Jesus for whom we have celebrated. We pray that for you today. Amen. Let's sing the closing hymn.